So let's look at the customer module. You'll see the layout is exactly the same as the supplier module. You have your list of customers, icons on the top, these action buttons. You'll notice there's a lot more reds on the screen, so a lot more people or customers over their credit limit. Now the way the customer module works is very, very similar to the supplier module. So first of all, if we want to add a new customer, click the new icon, fill in the customer details. Put in their address here, click next, their telephone number, fax, email, VAT number, the default nominal code you want for them. So this is set as sales Scotland, if we put sales international, click OK, if the default will be 4004. Let's say that this is zero VAT. Um, we could put T9, <clears throat> but if it is VAT, T1 for 20. Hit next. Enter the credit limit for your customer. And once again, settlement due days, payment due days. Next, bank details. And open and balance. So exactly the same as the supplier module. Here's the customer we just added. If we want to delete them, you can click delete there. Or you can double click on their account, click delete. And there we go. To edit a customer, double click on the customer. Once again, you can edit the details, any details of the customer apart from the account code. So let's say this customer moved from 4 Oakfield Drive to 10 Oakfield Drive. We can just change that there. Click Save. And that will be changed, number 10. You have your defaults. So the default nominal code default tax code, credit control, run scan all your defaults and credit limits, you have terms agree down here, put the account on hold down here, you may use this more, the account on hold on your sales ledger than the purchase ledger. Sales, so once again you have this table of sales in the financial year per month and then a graph to represent those figures. Activity tab, once again you can show this information. Date orders, probably what you'll do most often I can imagine. Click on date, and then you can show outstanding only. There's nothing outstanding on this account. Let's find an account that does. So outstanding only shows that there's an invoice outstanding for £4,309 and it's also made them in the red as their credit limits only 2000 You can put in your customer bank details here. There's also the memo. Now you'll use this memo more often than suppliers. The reason you may use this memo is you'll use it for credit control purposes. For example, you can put 0401 2009 phoned Phil said he would make payment tomorrow for example you then save that and then when you load them up again you'll have this diary of all your credit control that you have done with this particular customer. Now if you have a more professional version of Sage, Sage 50 accounts or a big add-on Sage Instant accounts, you won't need to use this memo under credit control or you'll have a, an extra tab for credit control. You'll have a box 
where you can put in the date, put in if it was by email, by phone, in person, if you've sent a statement, you have all options and you can click all the drop down boxes, choose what you want, click save and it will save you for you. Um, so if you have a, a better version of Sage than I've got here, you can just fill that in. And if you've got that version and you're struggling to use the credit control facility, get in contact with me and we can have a chat and I can show you how to use it. But a lot of Sage Instant accounts and basic Sage 50 accounts, this memo will suffice. You know, just put your details in, the actions you've made to claim the money back that's owed you, click save. And then if you want to ever print that, just click print and it'll print it off for you. It's so vital, and, and I know this is a Sage course but as a bookkeeper and accountant it's so vital especially for larger businesses or if you're having transactions or business with larger businesses to keep a record of statements you've sent phone calls you've made because you'll be able to stand on higher ground or better ground if you don't get your money and it goes to court so let's close that that's the memo so how do we invoice a customer well there's two ways we do that on Sage first of all we can post an invoice to Sage um, say we have a separate piece of software like Excel or some invoicing software we use to invoice our customers obviously we'd raise the invoice there once the invoice is printed we would then post those details onto Sage and the way we would do that is by clicking invoice you get this batch customer invoice screen appear, which is the same as the supplier. If we click on supplier invoice, same screen. Obviously, this is batch supplier invoices, not batch customer invoices. And it's filling your details here, and the same with a credit note. This time in red, like the supplier screen, filling the credit note. Or you can, the, the other way, invoices are done on Sage is that you actually raise the invoice itself on Sage so you create the invoice on Sage it will post all that information automatically on your sales ledger for you and print off the invoice for you to send to your customer um, so I'll go through both ways so first of all if you do raise invoices separately um, you have another piece of software, just click invoice, fill in the details. So I've highlighted Bob's building supplies so it comes up automatically. Put in the date, the reference. So we're stationary computer mark UK, so it might be something like S C M O O five hundred. Nominal code 4000 for sales, and we could put monitor, you know, whatever the sale was, whatever you want in that description. The net, and it'll do the VAT automatically for you. Now, if you've got more invoices for this customer, just click F6 and it'll copy the boxes above. So this one might be SCM00501. That might be monitor also, same amount. Put a new customer in, let's find, click S, or our S's will come up. Let's do Edward Stewart, 0606. SCM 00502. This has come up as Sales Scotland. So that's the default on that account. If it's not South Scotland, choose something else, but let's leave it as South Scotland. And this time let's do Tower 300. And the VAT will be worked out automatically for us. <clears throat> so once that's done, click Save. And there, now on there, if we click on Bob's Building Supplies. Click activity. If we click outstanding only, we'll see here are the two invoices we've just put on SCM 00500, SCM 00501. Same with credit note. If we click credit, let's put 
put a credit note on put in the credit note number the nominal code you wish the transaction to be put to the details of the credit note and the amount and click save 